I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone, to the regular session of Golden Hill City Council for September 7, 2021. Appreciate everyone being here. Uh, yeah. The, 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 <coughs> Mylan. Here. Bill. Here. Annie. Lauren. Ellie. Oh. There's Ellie. It might help them to hear me if I did on mute. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Andy, Lauren, Ellie, see you there. Ellie, I'm here. Okay. Dave. Air. Starting here. Okay. Well then, <coughs> we need a motion to excuse Andy Holm and Lauren Maker. They had uh, one in the field and the other had a commitment out for this work. So moved, Mayor. So second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to excuse Andy Holm and Lauren Megan Maker uh, for the City Council meeting for September 7, 2021. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. <clears throat> Thank you. The next item is a public hearing, and we'll open the public hearing. It is on the six year street plan. And, uh, the Bluetooth device is connected to you successfully. <laughs> And Dustin Conroy will present the details of the six year street plan. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, so, Larry and I worked on putting together the uh, six year street plan, and, and we basically just updated the one from two years ago. Um, uh, with a couple of exceptions, we updated the uh, the, the funds for the streets and um, the cost because today's cost is much higher than it has been um, in previous years. And also we added um, a chip seal project or a pavement, pavement preservation uh, to this as well. And so for 2022, we've put the West Byers project on uh, for that, which has been funded by TIB. Um, the bidding atmosphere has not been good this year for bidding a project. Um, it was, we, we could have gone out to bid in early August, but uh, we haven't been able to even get bids on small sewer projects. And so in discussions with TIB, we've held that project back. Uh, so that'll be constructed next year, and we'll go out for bid in um, probably either December or January um, this fall. And then for 2023, we included the uh, East Simcoe Drive, which is from Highway 97 to uh, Columbus as a, just a chip seal project, um, pavement preservation, and then we would uh, apply for uh, Schuster Street to get reconstructed, which is the street right in front of the primary school. And um, as you'll see, the um, PCR score, that's the pavement uh, score, which is um, done by TID. It's, it's not done by the city. It had a really low score of 24, so normally um, once you get below 30, you would apply for a full reconstruction. And so that's what we have down for that one. Um, for in 2024, we've got uh, North Mill Street from Broadway to the city limits. That's out towards the fairgrounds. And in uh, 2025, we've got a, um, a chip seal plan for South Roosevelt, um, basically from Broadway Avenue all the way down to Simcoe. And then also um, the, a reconstruction project of King and Brook Street. King Street's the one um, there by the middle school. Um, and then kind of around that corner to where it ties in uh, to Schuster Street, or Roosevelt, excuse me. 
Um, for 2026, um, we have pipeline from 3rd Street to High Street. And in 2027, uh, Darlin Street from Columbus to Washington. So Click Deck County this year is doing part of Darlin just outside the city limits. This would kind of close that gap and bring it all the way to uh, Columbus Avenue. And you'll see that the PCR score on that one's still pretty high, but in five years, most likely it should be lower by then. And so we've updated the cost on all those projects kind of on, on today's current dollars. And so there should be also a map that shows the location of each of those also. So if you've got any questions, um, you'll see on our cost estimate too, we, we broke it down into what the city's cost would be as well as what uh, we would apply to TIB, Transportation Improvement Board, to, to fund that as a grant. And there, that's typically a 10% city cost, 90% grant is what we typically put in for because that's what you get the most points for. And uh, your project's more likely to be funded in that range. Um, so, you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, that's an, on the uh, uh, Westfire uh, uh, street there, uh, going out for bid in December, uh, what would be the goal of how soon could you? So we'd be ready to, to, um, to start as soon as the weather broke in the spring. Okay, okay. Um, so most likely that would be May, uh, okay. um, maybe, maybe June if we had a late winter. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you typically get your best prices in bidding a project in December, January mm -hmm. considerably. And so I think it's a benefit to everyone to do that. Okay, good. Then on the, uh, uh, the street going out towards the uh, fairgrounds, would that be widened when you say reconstruction? Uh, yeah, so it could be widening. Um, we'd, we'd widen it to meet the city's uh, standards. That one's a challenge also. There's the house right on the corner. Right. Um, kind of creates a blind spot. Um, it's, it's narrow as you get towards the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and once you get on the other side of it, it it's also has some narrow spots and the big culvert for luggage. So it's got multiple challenges. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Anyone else with questions or comments? Any remarks from the public on six year street plan? Dustin, thank you. We'll close the public hearing. Wait a second. Hi, this is the Owen Wheeler, 409 East Main Street. I just had a question. Of, of, uh, could you reiterate um, about how far you were going to go on King Street? <clears throat> was it all the way down for the pool, or you stopped right at Broadway? No, King Street is actually just from uh, Collins Street and around the corner um, over to Roosevelt. So it's the road right in front of the um, uh, middle school entrance. And around the corner, um, also in front of the school administration building. Okay. Well. So just that small roundabout. Okay, never yes. mind then. I was, I was thinking a different King, North King Street, I said. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. I, I definitely now for what you're doing. I agree 100%, and I'm excited about it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, too. Anyone else for any statement on the six year street plan? See anybody else coming online? Okay, we'll, we'll close the public hearing. Now, this will be discussed under uh, the resolution on the uh, six year energy letter agreement that's in the packet as well. And that will be taken up. Six year street plan uh, under resolution will be taken up later in the meeting, and the council will act on that at that time. But this information will help anybody that wants to think about it. That decision that will come. Thank you. Okay, the next item we have is the agenda, and we need a motion to uh, for approval of the agenda and the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? I have a question. Yes. On the agenda. Um, just looking at the approval, since it includes payroll, the hundred and forty plus thousand dollars to Washington State. What is that? It's to the Washington State Department of Health. It's for loan payments for water projects that we've done in the past. Oh. It's, uh, I 
think it's a six month? Every six months. Every six months? I think so. I think it's every six months. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions or comments before we entertain a motion? If not, do we have a motion to approve the agenda and the consent agenda? No motion. We have a second. I don't move. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda and the consent agenda for the Goldendale City Council meeting for September 7, 2021. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We'll go on now to department reports and we'll start with our Goldendale Police Department and Sergeant Smith. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, nothing, two majors happened. We had an incident with a barricaded subject um, on the 5th. Um, we had a joint cooperation with the county and WSP. We were assisting. We were, they deployed their canine dog, which bit the suspect and happened to bite his ear. Um, he was apprehended at that time. He went down to OHSU for some medical treatment. Um, he was released from OHSU, ended up coming back to Goldendale that, later that night, violated a court order again, was Reapprehended again and now is incarcerated. Um, we've been working real well with our community. We've had um, members of the community solve the theft. We had a theft of a generator from downtown. Um, a good citizen was able to contact Darlene, one of the council members here, which called us and we were able to locate the suspect, get a confession, and get the property returned. So okay. we appreciate the community's support <coughs> and the activeness of being alert. So. That's exactly the right way. Yeah, they're not. Things are going really good. So, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Anything else, Mike? Um, just uh, negotiations are coming up. Just to throw that out there, remind everybody that our contracts up this next year. I think we're going to start those um, next week. Yeah, they normally um, start early. So, yeah, other than that, we're that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. We're here now from our Goldendale Fire Chief, Andy. Andy. <laughs> Noah. Um, Andy. Noah. Andy. Noah. That's the other brother. Um, so our um, new command pickup came in. So we ordered that in January. Um, very early on in January, it finally came in. We are ordering stuff to put it together. It'll be a command vehicle for us. Um, so we're having a little bit of difficulties. There's a lot of uh, shortages everywhere, so um, some stuff are a little, little difficult to get, but we'll, we'll get it. And at the last, last council meeting, um, Stephen brought up um, needing volunteers. We're, we're down to, I believe we're at 20, um, right around 20 for our volunteers. And we need to be up in the probably 30 to 35 range would be ideal, um, maybe, maybe a little more, but that's a good uh, starting number, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, if you guys know anybody that wants to volunteer, let them know. Is it something we should put out a, an announcement for? Uh, we, we, are, uh, we are working on that. Phil okay. is actually pretty good on the Facebook deal. Um, it's just something I bring up here just in case. Just in case, I guess. Well, somebody knows somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. That works fine. That's all. Thank you, Noah, very much. Uh, Larry, do you know whether Doug Phantom is on the line tonight? Yes, he is. He is. Okay. Doug, did you have something for Public Works? No, I don't have a bunch tonight. Um, most of us are training a lot week. And um, the street lights, I believe that PUD got those in their way of six, I hope. Yes, they did. Thank you. And other than that, we just been doing the math call. I'd like to iterate and thank the crew for all the hard work they put in to fix that Lincoln machine and try it out on on a couple of places in Goldendale for laying down a two inch lift on asphalt. Yeah, that's very nice one over on the intersection of Washington and Second Street. Hesitate to say the other one because I told the mayor of the wrong street. I think it's Allen. I think it's 
Uh, well, you said it, so good. <laughs> well, if you see the mayor wandering around town, you'll know. <laughs> uh, so anyway, they did an excellent job. They spent quite a bit of time trying to get that machine to run and run well, and it's turning out to be a very, very good machine. It takes a lot of baby, but for the small projects that we use it for, it works great. Great. That'll be a real step forward. I understand we have uh, an asphalt plant. You have something yes, else? Yes, Doug. I'll put out the one with the Didn't come up before. You're kind of breaking up, Doug. Could you try that again? I said I'll pass that along to the crew, but it didn't turn out too bad for our first go, that's for sure. Yes. It really was nice. <coughs> anyway, the, we'll do more if we can, given the circumstances that were dealt us. Right. Um, there's an asphalt plant in town doing Highway 97 work. So we were able to work with them to get the asphalt coming in a, in a fashion that allowed us to just keep the hot mix rolling. And so the proximity, it was, it was set up at Riley's Pit, and so the proximity was good for us. Absolutely. If we don't have that, then we're traveling all the way to the Dalles to, to take advantage of asphalt, hot asphalt yeah. from the Dalles. But that creates some logistical problems because you can't, you have to use all four trucks, and so you have to have four drivers and try to keep that hot asphalt going as best you can. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot more difficult to negotiate the logistics on going to the Dalles versus going on the east side of 97 here. That sounds like it made a very good use of an opportunity to so, yeah. when they are up and when they are back running, then we might try to do it again. Sure. Good. And thank you, Doug. So while you're on department reports, why don't we go ahead and ask Dustin to give us an update on a couple of things he's been working on? Certainly, certainly. Um, a couple of things we've been working on is the, or, or the first one would be the uh, new sewer line across Simcoe Drive. Um, we've been struggling to get uh, bids from contractors on that because they're busy, but we finally did receive a, a bid from Summit Excavation, a little over $48,000. Um, they extended the time frame to November 12th, but um, after looking at it, it's a good, it's a good bid. Uh, it's slightly below the engineer's estimate, and uh, I talked with uh, Randy Weirich of Stillwater Ministries. It still meets their deadline. Um, so that should be coming before City Council uh, at your next meeting to, for approval and award of that contract to, to some excavation. Um, we talked uh, briefly about uh, Buyer Street and how we intend to put that off for bid in December or January of, of this year. And there was one more item. Uh, I think, was it the Highway 97? Oh yeah, the Highway 97, we're still, um, I noticed they have it uh, all striped out there where they're going to grind and, and overlay, but we haven't seen the final contract come through since that contract was awarded to the contractor, so um, I'm following up with WSDOT to yeah. see where that's at. Um, but obviously we must be on their contract because they've been out there painting it, so. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> They mark it, we've got it. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you better much. Appreciate While we're you. here, because we're talking awards, uh, we did, we have gone out to bid for the civil work at the airport oh, good. for the extension of the communications and the electricity down to the, to the west uh, at the end of the taxiways there. And then they're, they're also going to put in a, a concrete pad and get it ready for the, for the fuel system, fuel tank. That's being bid. I think it's coming into bid sometime later this week, and we hope to have that ready for award as well at the next council. Very good. If the bids come in, a reasonable. Yeah, okay. so that will delay the fuel project. Oh, so, oh, I'm sorry. So, once that goes off a bid, then the tank is ready, or that tank. I've heard that the tank built. is ready. I know that uh, it's still under contract, and they're still working on it. I haven't heard that they have finished it yet. Oh, okay. I think we still have some more time before the, that gets here. Yeah. Okay. But it is on order and we're anxiously awaiting its delivery. That'd be great. Thanks.
Any other comments or questions? If not, uh, we'll go to uh, council business and the Puget Sound Energy Letter Agreement. And Larry's going to present the details. And Gerald Plug, general manager of the plan, is here as well. Okay. So we've been working on this letter agreement for over a year now. And we've been kind of going back and forth and back and forth. And we're trying to deal with NPDES permits. And we're trying to deal with them being coinciding with what the city requirements are and the, and, and the, requir the NPDES requirements outlined by, with the Department of Ecology and Fusion Sound Energy. We're trying to line all that stuff up to get it consistent and then also to address the issue of rates at the same point in time. So we have come up with this letter agreement, and like I said, we've had several people working on it. We've worked with the Department of Ecology, Puget Sound Energy, uh, the Wastewater Treatment Plant Supervisor, and myself, and the Public Works Committee. And we've taken, taken apart all of the issues and tried to resolve them in one succinct little package, which is the form of the letter agreement. So the first, there's six items that we're addressing. The first bullet point is regarding the, the instantaneous increase at any one time would be increased from 600 gallons per minute to 700 gallons per minute. That's the water coming into the plant. So the, the demand charge, the demand goes up, but it does not affect the annual acre feed amount. So the annual acre feed amount is still the same, it's just that from time to time, they need to fill up their, res their tanks at a much quicker pace than 600 gallons a minute. So they need to go up to 750 on a peak demand sure. request. The second bullet point is similar to that, but it just regards the industrial pre-treated sewer effluent. And there are times when they need to have that effluent come out at a faster rate and so we raise that from 90 to 200 gallons per minute. And that seems like a lot, but what they're going on is the NPDES permit said in its notes that they could go up to 200, but it had limited to four hours. And DOE said, we don't want to have that limitation on there. We just wanted to say 200, 200 GPM. And, but in practice, it's probably going to be about every four hours at a time as opposed to all the time. But again, it's not going to raise the annual acre feed limitation. And then the third bullet is relates to the water usage rate. The city's water usage rate at the time that this at the time that the original agreement was signed with PSE was 70 cents per 100 cubic feet. That was the overage rate. And at the time because the industrial PSE had come in and they had done a lot of uh, inf infrastructure improvements that we felt it was appropriate at that time, it was back in 2004, at that time we felt it was appropriate uh, to, to give them a break on their rates. So we made an industrial rate of 0.38, which is about 54% of the the pub of the residential rate of 0.7 percent. So we said, okay, since the rate has gone up, the usage rate has gone up since that time, it's now 0.95. So 54 percent of 0.95 is now 52 cents per 100 cubic feet. So this bullet point addresses just that issue of the rate change for water usage and in your process water rate. And then the fourth little point is the same again, except that it's on the sewer side. And then, as one of our public, as one of our public works crew me, uh, committee members said, they want on the fifth bullet point they wanted to make sure that the length of time remained at 30 years. So we're about two thirds of the way through that 20 years. And then finally, the letter agreement also indicates that the pH range uh, should be limited to six. 
from six to ten standard units. And that's just a NPDES Department of Ecology request. We've been at it for about 20 years. Of 20 of the 30 years. So you're right. Okay. So that is, in summary, that's what we've been doing over the past year or so. And that, that's captured in the letter to the Puget Sound Energy folks. And I've talked with Gerald today, and they've submitted it to their legal team and his boss. Uh, and we've submitted it to our legal um, uh, legal attorneys as well. And so everybody's had a chance to look at it, and we would like to, to recommend that this be approved at this time. And allow the mayor to execute this letter of agreement. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gerald, did you have anything you wanted to add to the discussion or question or anything? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, Larry okay. explained it very well. Great. Uh, I guess you had two questions. But, uh, Thank you. Do we, do we have questions or comments from the council? If not, we need a motion uh, to authorize the mayor to execute a letter of agreement. I'll so move. I will second. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to uh, authorize the mayor to execute a letter of agreement uh, dated September 7, 2021 with Puget Sound Energy. Any further questions or discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I don't think so. Good. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is resolutions and the six year street plan. And uh, Dustin will be available for any further questions and discussions. He gave a good presentation, so. Uh, We'll call on the council to uh, add any comments or questions they wish to make. I have a question there. Sure. Um, and maybe, um, I guess I could have brought it up earlier, but with the um, road to run the schools being redone, are those being designed in a way that they will hold the heavy traffic, the buses, and that? It'll last longer? Yeah, um, good question. There's lots of the streets in town actually don't have hardly any base under them. That's what's caused them to fail. So um, we have in Goldendale area, we've got high clay content in our soil, which is um, highly susceptible to moisture. And so um, they'll, they'll be designed with at least probably around 16 inches of, uh, of road base underneath them. And what that does is it, it moves the frost depth down, and so you, you don't, your road lasts longer because it's not. The, the moisture and the clay content doesn't affect it so much. And so pretty much any street we design anymore is designed that way. And, and when you increase your base that much, it also increases the, the load capacity of the road. So, so these roads, I'm sorry, uh, they will be pretty much redone from scratch? Yes. The, the, uh, the ones in the plan that are, are reconstruction are, though I think the only two that we have under um, pavement preservation are the chip seal on Simcoe and the chip seal on uh, Roosevelt. And keep in mind too, this is just this year's six year street plan. Maybe t uh, you know next year if there's a road that fails and it needs to be added to the list, it can be added too. Um, every year you guys get to amend this and, and, uh, and can change um, your priority also. So on Roosevelt and Simcoe, right around the high school, what are the, with the chip seal, mm -hmm. what are we looking at? for the road to last. Is it going to last or is it going to end up like the one right in front of the middle school that's in, in Schuster that's severely damaged? Um, so usually a chip seal, you're trying to add five to seven years of life to your asphalt. And what it does is, what causes um, asphalt to fail most of the time is moisture penetrating that asphalt. And so you get superficial, superficial cracks 
you get water in them, they freeze in the winter, they expand those cracks, water makes it through to your sub base. And so are, are those stretches of road, do they have that base? That's yes, they do. Yes. Like well yep. yep, absolutely. So those were good for that reason. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Well, it doesn't sound like uh, things are looking better for uh, costs. Uh, we finally got a reasonable bid there, huh? Yes, finally. It looks like <laughs> the forecast is looking a little more optimistic for uh, not having to reject bids because they're so high, you reckon? Yeah, every job is is different, um, but hopefully the bidding atmosphere is getting better. Yeah. Um, uh, we have seen some uh, supply costs and material costs start to come down, um, so that's always a good sign as well. All right. Any other questions or comments? If not, we need a motion to adopt the resolution. Mayor, I so move we adopt a resolution. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number 720, adopting a six year transportation improvement program for city streets pursuant to RCW 36.77.010. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The next item is ordinances, and uh, the first is the McCready Rezone Assembly of God Rezone, and Larry Bell and Mabel present that. Is that right? Yes, it is correct. Okay. <laughs> this one is a little bit complicated as well, but I think we've narrowed it down to the succinct issues uh, at play here. What I'd like to do is I'd like to address both of them at the same time because they are so intertwined with each other that I think it might be easier to understand. Okay. So if you go to the McCready Rezone and you look at this. So if you look at where you have all the nice colored papers, it's about five pages in. And it should be Dan McCready Rezone, and it's got a map with some red and blue highlights on it. You see that? So we are trying to accomplish a couple of things with this. And it came about because Mr. McCready had filed with me a boundary line adjustment, and I had to say, no, we can't do that unless we do this. And so this was a SEPA uh, application and a rezone application. The SEPA application happened a couple of months, two or three months ago, and now the rezone had to be submitted, and it had to go to the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commission met and made a recommendation on that as well. And now we're back to the city council for final approval and the map change. So, so back to the map, you'll see that there are a couple things. One is in the red slash, you go from C2, which is general commercial, to SR zones in the red slash. And then because the zoning lines are not on the property lines, and that's one of the main things we're trying to fix. We're trying to make sure that it's very difficult to have land use applications on a piece of property that has two different zones on it. This will happen from time to time because of the way things are sold, but in this case, we want to make sure that the property lines and the zoning lines are the same. So then the blue piece is where we're going to rezone from Mobile Home, which is Mobile Home Park, which is next to the Golden Ridge uh, Mobile Home Park. So we're taking it out of MH Park and converting it to SR Zone. So if you look at the very next, the very next one, which we'll get to in a minute, is, is the rezone 
of both Dan McCready's lot. You'll see that there in the red and the blue. And then you'll see, and I'll touch on this, I'll go back and touch on this in a minute. But then you'll see the MH to C2 zone and the MH zone, MH to SR zone. That's the Assembly of God piece. And I put that in there just to show how they work with each other. And then the next map is kind of what shows when it all happens. And it includes the piece that, um, that Rhodes' did in the same general area. So you'll see how it all ends up, and it's all on property lines. And this is where the Planning Commission spent quite a bit of time trying to you know, deal with what McCready was asking for. And at the same time, we needed to make sure that the zoning lines matched up with the property lines. So the other thing that's important about this is that this also gives an opportunity and to work with the roads, the roads as people, to utilize the road that they're going to build when they do their subdivision, because that road that was going to be built was right on that R2 zoning that was in the purple. And so it opens up an opportunity for McCready then to work with the roads to utilize an existing road. But again, as we've been talking about tonight, it kind of relates to getting contractors to be able to do the work at a reasonable price. Okay, so if you go to the next separation point, which is in purple, you see it says Assembly of God Rezone. If you go about five pages in on that as well, you'll see that there's some blue hatch marks and some green hatch marks. The green takes the zoning from MH to C2 and MH to SR. And you can see where now the zoning lines match up with the property line. So that's the main thing that the Assembly of God Church is trying to do with theirs. Is you're just making sure that, the, that they eliminate the MH zone and they run the, the zoning lines along the property line boundaries. So the, again, I must say the Planning Commission spent quite a bit of time on this. And they, I actually asked Planning Commission after I had all the, after I had, we had all these maps made to kind of weigh in. Okay, is this what we talked about? And then I talked with Mr. McCready as well, and he confirmed that this is what was approved at the Planning Commission level. So with all that, I'll take any questions, but I would recommend that the Council approve the ordinance for the McCready rezone, and that they also approve the ordinance for the Assembly of God. Any questions or comments? So this is right up there by the Assembly of God Church? Yes. And where the roses are doing the well. Yeah. Right in the Any question or comment? Well, it sounds like this will fix the problem. Yeah, I, think I think it will, yeah. I think it will. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Larry, you're going to have to give some direction on this. Uh, okay. The, the, the uh, wording for the motion is identical for both. Do we do it once or twice? And Connie, I think the, the uh, Resolution number. I went and got them. I thought you had. Fifteen oh nine and fifteen ten. One five nine. One five zero nine. One five one zero. <clears throat> what was the second? One five. One five one zero. One zero. Okay. Nine and ten. 
Okay. Yeah. Good job at it. Yeah. I want to make a motion to approve both resolution 1509 and 1510 as recommended by the Planning Commission. And I'll second that motion. Good. A couple of things. One is it, it, it is an ordinance. Yep. I think you said resolution. But oh, sorry. Ordinance sure. 1509 and 1510. And then the oh, request man. was to waive the second reading, too. That's all right. I'm okay with that as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And we have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. Oh, I'm sorry. Who made the motion? I did. Okay, sorry, Phil. <laughs> you guys move so fast. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinances number 1509 and 1510, uh, which rezones the McCready property from Mobile Home Park, MHP, and General Commercial C2 to Suburban Residential SR, waiving the second reading. Any further questions or discussions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is unanimous. Thank you. That's good work. I hate the term using the warp speed, but I think that's what we achieved that time. We'll go now to uh, public comments. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, report of officers and city administrator and the mayor. I've done enough. <laughs> <laughs> you tired yes, so you quickly. have. <laughs> <laughs> Can we begin with Phil? Great, Mayor. Uh, well, we were moving so fast, so I'll slow it down for a bit. See? <laughs> <laughs> and not let Larry rest too much. <laughs> um, so I have a couple of, of questions. Um, the first one was um, on the road to West Court Street, in front of the court. I was, if I remember correct, last that when it was presented, they were going to indent um, the current courthouse lawn and make that road wider. That was the original plan, I believe. Um, and now that road is looking very narrow as it's starting to take shape. The, tree, the trees became an issue and along that would be the south side of the road, right? That's what you're talking about? Yeah. And there was a, they were taking, there was a plan to do exactly what you had said, mm -hmm. uh, but the plan got derailed by some requests from some individuals in our community that wanted to keep those trees, and so they made it narrower and we left left the roadway as the width that it really was before. So the width that you see right now mm -hmm. is about the same as what it was before. So okay. however that's gonna make with vehicles parked there that's going to make that not the width that it is before. So the the county did not have money to move the trees? No, I don't think that was and it. so we're taking because I know, again, the fire department, which was a big topic then, well, large to vehicles are coming through there, and so we're going to trees versus public safety. <laughs> well, I've talked with Noah a little bit about it already, and there are things that are still in play. For instance, uh, we talked about with Gordy and Kelsey about making the bulb at the intersection of Grant and Court mm -hmm. smaller and then eliminate the parallel parking on the south side of the road. Okay. Which makes that much wider then mm -hmm. because you don't have the parking impacting <coughs> the traveling fire trucks. Okay. You understand so, what I'm saying? So there won't be any parking on the south side of the road? Is that well, that's one of the things we've been discussing. Where is everybody going to park then? Because that's well, a huge problem. Well, there's going to be where the juvenile department is, mm -hmm. where economic development department is. Those are going away. And those that will all become parking spaces. Okay. Then the other other place where they're going to, they've done some temporary work on 
Grant Street between Court and Allen. Mm -hmm. And all of that will be, I don't know if you remember, but uh, Gordy Kelsey came in and made a presentation that they wanted to, to vacate that street. And so that street will be vacated and uh, redo the parking over there as well. Okay. So that will yeah, be added parking. Like if, right now, how it is, that segment behind the courthouse is very narrow. Yes. I mean, just driving my car with another car coming in. That's just temporary. Okay, because and if that's the same way that this road is going to look? No. No. Okay. And then the other place where they're going to add parking is they bought the Columbia River Bank parking lot. And right. they also did some temporary stuff to, to get parking for as many people as they can for their workers and so forth. Right. They still go over in the main street. <laughs> well, my, but, but a lot of the parking situation is still temporary. I think, well, I think I will share the concern um, about the parking there because right now, even though they've moved some vehicles, all of the park, or most of the parking, with the exception of like five spots behind the courthouse, are taken up by courthouse or county vehicles, which is not public parking. And the parking by the bank is also prior to the construction happening and <coughs> all those vehicles were all county vehicles parked there during the day, overnight. Uh, yeah, what we're so, gonna so they're creating parking for themselves right. and then again yeah. no public parking. The other place where they're gonna have public parking is when they tear down the old Clickett County P V D building there next to the public workshop. And so that building That's will go away parking. as well. Right. Where the planning and building departments are. And then what we'll, what we'll see happen is what I encouraged uh, the Public Works Department to do was to move all of their vehicles, like their buses, mm -hmm. and things like that, the, the, the motor pool, equipment pool, cars, would all be going over to that location because that's more out of the way and, and get people who are wanting to use the Click Tech County courthouse mm -hmm. uh, to be able to park a lot closer and then well, deal with my suggestion would be move their motor pool to the fairgrounds if they're just going to leave the vehicles parked there until somebody checks it out other than taking out parking spots that because what's going to happen is because of proximity right. we're already talking about issues with parking on main street so you're going to have people going to the court, to the new courthouse facility, parking in front of the businesses on Main Street, walking around because half a block is better than a whole block. Yeah. You know. Well, so this was a major topic of discussion when we went through this whole right issue of the site plan. We we had we counted up about 170 parking spaces and we came up to almost 300 with the new plan. Okay. How many well, employees are there though? <clears throat> because from what I understand, the county, with that parking, it's going to be mostly for the county workers. It's not public is what, it, what well, I was Well, you're right. They will have a new building. Right. And, and, and without moving the trees for parking, that's going to cut out a lot of parking spots from the front of the building. Well, this, it'll just cut out the parallel parking if we do it that way. Which is like... And parking spots, parking spots. Uh, I was thinking closer to seven, but so. okay. okay. Well, that was one question because it definitely changed from what what it was before. Okay. And, I mean, <coughs> it, it seems like it all benefits the county, but it doesn't benefit the public. So I think we just need to keep an eye on it and make sure that as they redesign... Well, I think there can be some, some uh, maximization of parking with some creative uh, parking spaces and parking lines. And I think, again, we, we added over 100 parking spots. Right. But like you say, that, you know, like the Columbia River Bank one, that was, in, in part, was already being used by some of the county workers. Right. Or not, just by their vehicles. Yeah. So. Okay, we'll watch it. <coughs> hey, to give a little history to this, because it was before you were on the council, 
when Carl Emmett was director of public works, he mapped all that out with the county to make sure they would have adequate space for everybody public as well as the county workers. And it's, it's, it took into account all the buildings that would be removed. And then it's, when you see that, and I'll, I'll try to get those papers for you, because it laid it out, made it a lot easier to, to figure out where all those cars are going to go. Right, well, he did a good job with it. The biggest concern is, like I said, it's already hard enough driving through the back of the courthouse in a passenger vehicle. Yeah. Let alone having a fire station oh, back there with no, that's, I mean, yeah. well, I just hope we have really, really good insurance. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not, if, it's going to be a matter of time. So, and that can be under the note for the meeting. Um, okay, second question is, uh, so more of a request along the same lines. Um, is something that I've been following, um, and so I would like to ask if we can invite our uh, representative for the EMS uh, agency. Oh, Tony, or uh, is, it going? Yeah, is he still on? Or uh, I thought I he was check. retiring. Uh, if not, we should find a new one because um, I think he was. He had let us know that he was going to be departing, um, stepping down. And or um, actually more of the EMS director and a representative from KBH. Um, I know in the news and uh, along other sides of communication, there is a huge uh, problem with EMS or medical service being provided, um, both here in the entire Gorge area and the surrounding states with the hospitals filling up. Um, I know that if you turn on the scanner, you'll, you'll hear KVH transporting all the way to Seattle, um, looking for an ambulance to transport, um, you know, to further away hospitals. Um, and I think on their uh, hospital, uh, hospital Facebook, they were commenting about uh, a patient that they were unable to find transport for. Uh, ICU bed for they uh, couldn't find a bed. Couldn't find a bed uh, for a whole day or close to a day, and they had to keep that patient in the ER to receive semi-adequate care. Um, which I think it puts Golden Dale in a really tight spot. So I'd like to hear from them um, and also hear what we can do as a city or or a council, if anything, to support their needs. Um, to improve that EMS service. Um, every time they request for a patient transfer, it takes that ambulance away from the county, which we only have three. Um, and if they're going to Portland, that's two hours each way. If they're going to Seattle, that's a whole shift, that's a whole day that we're missing an ambulance. They've always done transport, though. Right, but it's usually to a nearby hospital. Uh, when I was on ambulance, I went to Spokane, Seattle, so. It just depends, I guess. Yeah. But the, the, more, the more the situation does not improve, um, we're, we're going to find ourselves in a tight spot. Uh, at, le at least I'd like to be informed as to what's happening with them. Um, and if anything we can do to help them. Or what we're going to be facing. I think we're going to find a tight spot here with this vaccine. Very much. Well, that's a whole different. Wow. That's a whole different animal there. Because we might be losing some employees, and <laughs> so. <coughs> but we'll contact EMS to see if we can't get represented for the next council meeting. Yeah, if we can hear from them and KBH, and um, you know, I know they had a, a hard time with their uh, bond proposal, but. Um, this is going to be a different situation that's not going to resolve anytime soon. Right. So. Unfortunately. Anything else? That's it. Right. I think that's plenty. Milo? Well, thank you, Mary. Yeah. Well, just a quick uh, comment. Uh, a week or so ago, I was up at the governor's office, and, and I don't meet in the governor's office, but we meet outside with the staff and give them an update on what the city of Goldendale is working on and also uh, an update on 
the pump storage project, which is a very big project that could benefit uh, the city of Goldendale and the junior tax districts here. So, And uh, Noah's comment, need more volunteers. Uh, I've been pushing that for a number of years. And again, I'll go talk to the Volunteer Firefighter Association and find out what, what they may be coming up with uh, uh, this uh, coming legislature. The idea is what we need to do is try to come up with a incentive uh, so the fire departments can recruit and also retain you know, the, the volunteer firemen. So uh, I know I'm still on the board of volunteer firemen and reserve officers, and we're trying to improve the retirement system. And, but I know everybody needs to kind of work on that because that's a problem statewide or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's what I have here. So. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Uh, let me go last, please, Mayor. I have to gather my thing here. Okay. <laughs> so I was just kind of throwing it around, but I think our dog catcher and our compliance person, if we combined that and just hired one person that could do it, because I know what, don't we have the dog catcher just as like eight hours a week or something, then the compliance person, I don't think, is full time. If we could combine that, we might be able to kind of fix some stuff up around here. Just a thought. I think that's a good thought for the budget committee. Yeah, that's my thought. There's a good discussion. Are you on the budget committee? No. What day is it? I am. What, wait a second, what committee is she on so we can have some? <laughs> <laughs> they want the planning, right? So this is a planning thing. <laughs> You're on the public works. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we need to talk about how we could work it out. Yeah, I think that Let's to see. combine those and get somebody that just Full time would be kind of something. Okay. Ellie, is Ellie still on the line? Yeah. Ellie, do you have anything for council? Um. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard everybody talk about how how stressed the um, our EMS services are and. I think thanks to the the governor and his recent vaccine mandate, it's probably going to get even more stress. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Well, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, one thing I appreciate is starting these meetings off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm glad I remembered all the words. It's been a while since I've said it regularly. You know, I was thinking about some of the words in that pledge and how it ends. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you think about those words? Those words were guided by providence. During the last uh, council meeting, the mayor read a card from the church out in Centerville. They just wanted to let us know that they're praying for us. That was, you know, special to me to hear that. You know, it's the kind of best gift we can give each other, especially in times like these. You know, George Washington would regularly call upon Americans to pray for their country. So, uh, I'd like to yield the rest of my time to Pastor Kevin Gershak to say a prayer with us now. Well, first of all, I don't want to grandstand, but I do want to thank you for taking care of our issue with our zoning, and I speak on behalf of Dan and the McCready's as well for that. But I would, if it would be all right with you, I'd love to honor you by praying for you. And I want you to know I'm not just doing this tonight. Our church and a lot of the churches in this community pray for you guys regularly. We know you've got a lot on your plate. You. Heavenly Father, I just want to take this moment and thank you for our mayor, our city council, our police, our health care workers, our firefighters. And God, as they're on the front lines of a lot of these struggles right now, and having to make tough decisions in a very challenging time. I ask God that you would bless them with wisdom even beyond their own abilities. God, that they would see things 
that they weren't even supposed to see. And they would make decisions that would protect this community, protect its residents, protect its businesses. And God, we ask you to bless this community. We pray that you would just, uh, in, in all things, help us to be a community that, that cares for one another, that uh, treats each other with respect, and that builds one another up. And again, I thank you for each of these. I thank you for their time that they invest, the energy they put into the jobs. And Lord, I pray you would just bless them for that. And now I just pray your direction as they move forward in their decision-making process. And uh, to all of those things, we just want to give you praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. The only other one is the mayor's remarks. And uh, I think the pastor's words were very uh, appropriate for all of us. Uh, there's a lot of cooperation going on in this county right now. Uh, the city, the county, uh, the state to some extent, federal government as well, working to be able to, to evaluate, present, and discuss all of those projects for Goldendale and Cleveland County that have been in our SEDS list and our county projects list, all those things have been there for years. You've talked about them many, many times. It has to do with the wastewater treatment plant, with uh, a number of different things like that that are costly difficult to get support for. And this whole effort is a consolidated effort, working very, very hard to be able to attract donors to get some cash to help get these donations, to help get these projects uh, started or, or steps of it done. And uh, it takes a tremendous amount of cooperation, which we're getting very, very nicely. And we appreciate it very much. It's just an astounding uh, effort. We won't know until probably uh, late September. You'll be getting more details over the next uh, weeks and the month uh, as far as how that all came out and, and where it's going to start with. Uh, and we'll uh, try to get as much information as possible out. But uh, this is a very positive step for economic development for Goldendale, uh, also for the uh, Columbia Gorge Community College. Our KVH has quite a big project there. Things that we can't do all by ourselves. Every one of them is like that. And so we're trying to get outside help from state, federal, uh, and other uh, foundations that might help us to be able to fund projects that are needed. They've been on the books a long, long time. And if we don't get this help, they'll probably be there when we die. They're big, difficult projects. So with that, I, I really commend the, the group. You know, they're called REDS, R-E-D-S. It's not a drug. First time I heard it, I thought, oh, this is not a good discussion. <laughs> but it stands for Regional Economic Development uh, Summit. And that's what happens on the 22nd of September. And that will be a big, uh, a big event. It will be publicized and open. And I think we'll be able to uh, begin to make some real progress there. Uh, with that, let's go to public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Kevin has his hand up. OK. Mayor, can you hear me? Yes. I First off, I want to apologize. I did miss the last meeting. Grandma got COVID, and we had a, a separate death in the family. I apologize for missing the last meeting. Um, second, Mayor, is there any way that you or Larry could talk with uh, the hospital and possibly get one of the doctors to come out and maybe give a five, ten minute lecture on the next meeting? Um, for information purposes on COVID, um, there's a lot of disinformation out there, which I heard a little bit today. Um, me being a scientist, it, it scares me. But I just thought that would might be a good idea if we can get somebody that's actually educated on the topic to address the city council and the city in whole. I digress. You have a good day, sir. Thanks, Kevin. We'll do our best to get that organized. Anyone else for public comment? Dion has your hand up. Who? Dion. Unless, Dion. unless it's still up from the last time. <laughs> Please go ahead. Dion, did you have something to say? Yes. Um, no, I, I just, I, 
in regards to um, Ellie and Kevin, <clears throat> I am concerned about what's happening to our staff and every, uh, you know, there, we may lose quite a few people come October with this mandate. So, yeah, I think we should all be concerned on who's caring for us and how, and I think it's important that we all do. Thank you for the prayer. Um, and I know that prayer is it's vital and key to all of this because all we want is the best for each other. So I think it, <clears throat> I think we should take that into account for sure, 100%. Thank, Thank you, you guys. That's all I have to say. Appreciate it very much. I think we all need to take that step ourselves, individually and as, as congregations. Anyone else for public comment? Yes. Oh, I guess a couple things. Now I just Barry. start out. I gotta come up to. <laughs> I just start out with one thing. I've been trying to download the uh, water and sewer billing, and I get an error that uh, PDF document you request is not currently available. However, online payments can be made. PDF should be available soon. Are you aware of that? And do you know what the status of it is when they'll be ready? That's the first time I've heard of anything like that. Okay. Second of all, for Kevin, we'll, we'll he could, check into that. okay, all right, and then uh, we've done, uh, the hospital has done some on their Facebook page, I don't know what it is, I'm not a Facebook fan, nor do I waste my time on it, but he has put out some very good videos called Doc Talk through various weeks, and he's explained a lot of things about COVID, maybe that would give Kevin the education or the information that he's asking for, so that's all I have. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Kevin, is your hand up again or is it just still <laughs> up? <laughs> no, I'm an idiot. I didn't lower it. My fault. Okay. Um, but I would still like to see a doctor show up in the city council, listen to everything that an actual doctor has to say. Facebook is Facebook. Um, I don't rely on it for this. <clears throat> No, we'll work on it. I think we can get it done. If there aren't other public comments, we need a motion to uh, adjourn City Council. I'll motion. Second. I'll second that. It's moved and seconded to adjourn City Council for September 7th, 2021. Our next meeting will be on September 20th, 2021. With that, good evening, and thank you all for the work, and thank this council for their great work to get this all carried out. Thank you.